Well, now we're going to have a look at a scene made for the 3rd Avenue Railway System in December 1930. According to information that I've been able to turn up, turn up, this view and that following were taken on December 30th, 1930, riding northward on Main Street in New Rochelle as far as Rose Street, which uh, was where North Avenue is today. Both Main Street and Huguenot Street had two-way automobile traffic in those days, and we are riding north on Main Street now. Both traffic signals overhead and traffic policemen directing traffic, we may assume that the traffic signals were just being installed at that time. I'm not sure what purpose was uh, in mind when this film was made for 3rd Avenue Railway System, looking out the front of a trolley. Possibly these are outtakes from a publicity film which was made uh, to uh, encourage people to ride the trolleys in those depression years. In those days, North Avenue did not extend south of Huguenot Street. There was a small street called Rose Street between Huguenot and Main, and that was the street that the trolleys turned on to get over to Pershing Square. There was no section of North Avenue from Main Street down to the Shore Road either. In this view, you can see an empty space between two buildings up ahead on the right, where a movie theater had been torn down to make way for the extension of North Avenue from Main Street down to the Shore Road. Now, as we turn to the left here into Rose Street, this intersection today would be the intersection of North Avenue and Main Street. But North Avenue had not yet been completed, and Rose Street, a narrow little street where the north side of North Avenue uh, now exists, uh, was the street on which the trolleys turned from Main Street to get over to Pershing Square, Huguenot Street, and North Avenue. Now this is Rose Street, which doesn't exist anymore as such. You can see that buildings have been torn down on the left side of it to widen Rose Street out into the southern extension of North Avenue. But the buildings on the right-hand side, for the most part, still remain. They are presently on the north side of North Avenue. That double apartment house, for example, and the New Rochelle Standard Star newspaper building, which is still there, although no, no longer a newspaper office. When the widening was completed, the trolley track was relocated to the middle of the newly widened street so that the S-turn at Pershing Square right here in the foreground would not be quite as pronounced as we see it in this older view. Remember, this is 1930. There's what looks like a, uh, a Willys Overland Whippet automobile heading east, and we are turning north now into North Avenue, passing an O car from Tuckahoe, and we're about to cross over the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, which still passes under North Avenue and New Rochelle. But, of course, there's no New England Thruway there today, so uh, the, uh, this area doesn't look quite the same today. Beyond it, many of the older buildings still remain. Again, a, a combination of traffic signal and a policeman directing traffic, probably to get motorists used to the idea of having to obey traffic signals. We seem to be chasing the fruit and vegetable vendor's truck down along North Avenue. As we head around the curve, you will see the New York, Westchester, and Boston Railway's North Avenue station, which spanned North Avenue on the uh, branch that extended from Mount Vernon across to New Rochelle and then up to Port Chester. There's the North Avenue station. Today there's an automobile bridge there today used as a, an access highway to the New England Thruway. It's not the same bridge structure which you see here, however. Passing under the New York, Westchester, and Boston Railway's North Avenue station, we continue northwestward beyond the station area 
and, and farther up into a more residential area of New Rochelle. Much of this part of North Avenue still looks very much the same. New Rochelle was a wealthy area at that time, and you see automobiles in these pictures ranging from Model T and Model A Fords all the way up to Rolls Royces, with just about every sort of automobile of that era in between. There's a Model A Ford on the left, and now we head up toward the curve that takes us around to Fifth Avenue, where the Larchmont line diverges. Here's an M car from the Larchmont line, followed by what looks like a 27 Buick and a Packard, two Model A delivery vans, another Model A Ford. These were contemporary cars at the time. There's the building near Fifth Avenue, which is still there today. Last I looked, Spitzer's hardware store was occupying part of this building. And at the corner of Fifth Avenue, this trolley will turn into Fifth Avenue and head up to Larchmont. Although in the movie view, we will not see that. Instead, we will return to Pershing Square and head south. The trolley is now turning off North Avenue into Fifth Avenue, and this line led all the way up into the uh, Larchmont area, but not into Larchmont itself. I believe the line terminated at the Larchmont border. Now we're turning from Pershing Square, from North Avenue, into Huguenot Street, southbound. Again, Huguenot Street had two-way traffic in those days. And we passed several of the uh, trolley uh, connections which led between Huguenot and Main Streets, such as at Mechanic Street, and Lawton Street, and Division Street. The bus coming up behind the truck on the left is a county transportation bus which is heading up to Stamford and which was the replacement for the New York and Stamford trolley line which was bus in 1927. There's a Model T Ford on the left and a whole string of cars of other makes of various types and sizes coming up. On the right is the trolley line coming out of the New Haven Station trolley loop. That was where the New York and Stamford trolleys had originated and come out onto Huguenot Street in those days. The other end of the loop at Division Street, also with the switches leading into the Huguenot Street track. A Model A Ford coming around the curve, another one, and a big Rolls Royce on the left heading north up Huguenot Street. Study in contrast, there's a Model T Ford following it. Another intercity bus coming up, this time a Boston bound bus, a white heading for Boston as the destination sign indicated. Probably came from Manhattan and since there were no throughways in those days Boston Post Road was the main highway between New York City and New England. We're still heading south down Huguenot Street. Up ahead is the back of the movie theater, which was built between Maine and Huguenot to replace the movie theater, which was torn down to make way for the extension of North Avenue from Main Street over to the Shore Road, as we saw in a previous scene. All these scenes were taken on December 30th, 1930. Here we have a Chevrolet moving van coming up past the trolley. And as we look on up ahead, we see the we see the junction, the fork in the road at Maine and Huguenot, where we will join the line, uh, the northbound trolley track.
There's the junction of Maine and Huguenot. And from here on, we have two trolley tracks, southbound and northbound, hmm. on the Boston Post Road. Incidentally, it's Huguenot Street, which follows the route of the old Boston Post Road through New Rochelle. Main Street was added much later. More traffic signals have been installed, and we don't see that many traffic policemen now. The trolley is going to head south down Boston, Boston Post Road as far as Drake Avenue, and will turn left onto Drake Avenue, heading over east. This is the route of the Glen Island car, which came from downtown New Rochelle and went over to Fort Slocum Road, past the Shore Road, and down to the ferry to Glen Island. Now here's the intersection of Boston Post Road and Drake Avenue. This time we have a traffic policeman and he's going to hold up any northbound traffic while our trolley makes the turn into Drake Avenue. The trolley turns into Drake Avenue and heads east. And the 1930s scenes end here and we go to some color shots beginning in 1939. That J trolley is making the same turn as in the 1930 scenes, but we're looking at it from the sidewalk. The trolley has just turned off Boston Post Road, headed east on Drake Avenue to the Shore Road. Now the trolley is heading down the Shore Road and is turning eastward again into Fort Slocum Road for its run over to the Glen Island Ferry Terminal at the foot of Fort Slocum Road. There was also a ferry to Fort Slocum. The same trolley has come back now up Fort Slocum Road and will head back into downtown New Rochelle. Route P was the Webster Avenue trolley line in New Rochelle and here's a Webster Avenue car in 1939 which has left the terminal at the New Haven Railroad Station and is heading out Webster Avenue over toward Mayflower Avenue. The Webster Avenue line was primarily a single track line with passing sidings. This passing siding was located on the bridge in front of the New York, Westchester and Boston's Webster Avenue station. In those days before World War II, the banner signs on the dashboards of the car had a blue background with white letters. After the war, this became a red background to match the dashboard. That Webster Avenue car has just come out of the New Haven Railroad loop, uh, trolley loop, has turned across the bridge and is heading up the Webster Avenue line. This A trolley has come around from North Avenue and into the New Haven Railroad station loop, has made its stop, is heading out, I believe, Lawton Street, and at the same curve, the Webster Avenue trolley comes in from the other direction, stops on the curve, and makes its turn back. This is an L trolley heading down Franklin Street from Boston Post Road. Route L was the Hudson Park line in New Rochelle. A fairly lightly traveled line except in the peak days of summertime. This is coming down, I believe, Franklin Street into the Hudson Park area. Most of these New Rochelle lines were changed to buses around 1939 or so, leaving primarily the A and uh, B routes in that part of Westchester. If you think you recognize the Tunaville trolley in that car trolley in that cartoon, you're correct. We are going to Pelham Manor and to take a look at the H trolley, which was the Pelham Dale Avenue line. There's the H trolley at the New Haven Railroad's Harlem River Branch on Pelhamdale Avenue uh, up from the Shore Road. The car has come uphill from its eastern terminal at Shore Road and is heading westward on Pelhamdale Avenue. It will go over to the Boston Post Road to join the A line and then we'll head over into uh, North Pelham.
Pelhamdale Avenue looked quite rural in those days. This is 1937 now. This is still on Pelhamdale Avenue following one of the H trolleys. The H trolley was one of two or three lines which inspired Fontaine Fox to draw the famous cartoon of the Tuneville trolley that meets all the trains. There's the H car following an A car on Pelhamdale Avenue west of the Boston Post Road. The line turned northward on Wolf's Lane and headed up to North Pelham where it met the other New Haven station in New Rochelle, this one on the main line. On this particular day, abandoning the service, we have a regular car, the convertible, and a special car, a Steinway Lines Bernie, the bounciest little four-wheel car they could find to simulate the Tunaville trolley of much earlier days, which had inspired Fontaine Fox to create his cartoon. There on the left we have one of the buses which is that day going to replace the H trolley. And we're getting ready for some celebrations here with the New Haven station overhead. The Steinway Bernie is lettered for the Tunaville trolley and will make a, a last run along the Pelhamdale Avenue line, but not until the cartoonist himself gets here, Fontaine Fox. An old-time automobile, looks like an early Franklin or Brewster, is brought out for the purpose. And the crowd starts to gather. The old man in the Panama hat as a retired motorman of the H trolley line who was brought out for the for the day celebration. He apparently was the inspiration for the skipper of the Tunaville trolley. Now here comes Fontaine Fox, the man with the with no hat on his head right in the middle there, the cartoonist who drew the trolley who was also being celebrated that day. A big crowd gathered for the last run of the trolleys on the Pelhamdale Avenue line. And then it was all over. From then on, gasoline-propelled buses uh, would operate the Pelhamdale Avenue route. Elsewhere in Westchester, we move over to Yonkers now. We're looking down on Getty Square in the late 1930s. And some views at street level at Getty Square of trolleys coming and going. Yonkers trolley routes were numbered from 1 to 10, although the Route 10, which was uh, upper... Uh, Central Avenue line had been discontinued quite early. Those operating in those days were from 1 to 9. This is still before World War II with the trolleys and the old style paint schemes and the pre-war automobiles plainly in evidence. Still at Getty Square where uh, most trolley lines through Yonkers operated. The Broadway lines operated through Getty Square, uh, and the uh, east-west lines, for the most part, operated down through Getty Square into the foot of Main Street, where they turned back. This is on Warburton Avenue in the upper part of Yonkers, and at the foot of Main Street we see a McLean Avenue car, a number four car in uh, uh, summer dress, a convertible car with its side panels removed. A number seven car heading eastward on Main Street, and now we're riding a number five car along Nepahan Avenue and about to pass under the Aqueduct Arch, the old Croton Aqueduct Arch in uh, downtown Yonkers. Still on Nepahan Avenue now, we're in, in the single track uh, in the middle of the street, and as we pass Lake Street, the single track moves over to the east side of Nepahan Avenue and continues on the side of the road all the way up to the Yonkers City line at Tompkins Avenue. This is Yonkers Avenue crossing over the Sawmill River Parkway with an eastbound number seven trolley and another westbound number seven trolley. On the Sawmill River Parkway Bridge. As you can see from the pre-war paint scheme, these scenes are taken well before World War II, although with the newer style trolleys in evidence, uh, it has to be late 1930s or very early 1940s. There's a big 12-cylinder Packard and a Lincoln Zephyr, both from about 1937. 
Back in Mount Vernon at West 1st Street and 5th Avenue, a bus from one of the Buster Tudor trolley lines crosses West 1st Street and a trolley, an A trolley, comes out of 5th Avenue and heads into West 1st Street. The trolley tracks on West 1st Street were next to the sidewalk there simply because they were adjacent to the New Haven Railroad cut, which was supposed to be eventually covered up and West 1st Street widened out into a big wide boulevard, in which case the trolley tracks would then be in the middle of the boulevard. But the widening was never carried out, apparently due to the overhead wires of the New Haven Railroad's electrification, which was installed about 1907. You can see here what the situation actually was, and you can visualize what it was supposed to be with the New Haven Railroad cut covered over. So right down to the end of trolley operation here in uh, 1952, when the number 7 line continued to operate, uh, we had both directions of trolley tra traffic on the uh, westbound side of West 1st Street, a potentially dangerous situation from the standpoint of the motorist. A and B cars, of course, also operated through these line, trolley lines until 1950 when the Mount Vernon and New Rochelle lines were changed to buses. An A car turning from West 1st Street into, uh, no, not from West 1st Street, from uh, 5th Avenue into uh, East 6th Street. South of Scott's Bridge in Mount Vernon, the tracks moved over into the middle of West 1st Street. Here we are at Garden Avenue Yard in Mount Vernon, down at the foot of the hill on Sanford Boulevard, or East 6th Street there, adjacent to the Hutchinson River and the Hutchinson River Parkway was the main yard for the southern Westchester trolley lines, and here we have cars from Manhattan, Bronx, and Westchester, 3rd Avenue Railway System lines, in various stages of disrepair, awaiting either cannibalizing to supply parts for other cars or eventual burning and scrapping. There's even a Steinway car from Queens, uh, an affiliate of the 3rd Avenue Railway System was the Steinway Lines, which operated cars in the Astoria section of Queens. That four-wheel car had been a passenger car many years earlier, but was converted to a service car uh, by the time these views were taken, probably a sand car for wintertime traffic. That Bernie car had been converted to a rail grinder to smooth rail joints. Another work car, this time a supply car, and various other ex-passenger cars converted into work car service. That car number one, I believe, eventually wound up at the Brantford Electric Railway Association in East Haven, Connecticut, and has since been uh, re restored back to what it originally had been, a Union Railway uh, car from the Bronx, I believe number 316. In the late 1930s, the 65th Street shops in Manhattan was continuing to turn out new trolley cars and rebuilt trolley cars, new trolley cars, and here was the very first of the center exit cars built for the Broadway line, the so-called Huff Liners named for Slaughter W. Huff, president of the 3rd Avenue Railway System. The car was temporarily equipped with a trolley pole for testing here at the Garden Avenue yard in Mount Vernon, and then after tests were finished, the pole was removed, and the car was fitted with its usual plow arrangement for collecting current from the slot conduit on Manhattan trolley lines. Here's number 551 being tested, running back and forth at Garden Avenue yard, this was the progenitor of a whole series of high 500 and low 600 series cars. Two types, both with center exits, built for the Broadway line, 
1937 and 38. There's one of them at the Kingsbridge Car House in Manhattan. And now the date is June 8, 1941. A 1200 series car, number 1237, has been chartered by the National Railway Historical Society for a trolley trip through the Bronx and Westchester and is leaving from the Kingsbridge Car House in Manhattan and heading up through various places in uh, Westchester County with its uh, special car banner sign with a blue background hung from the dashboard. The line is heading up through Yonkers here and is seen on the lower part of Warburton Avenue which was a single track line with uh, passing sidings. There's a southbound number one Broadway Warburton car the upper part of Warburton Avenue was wide enough to accommodate two trolley tracks, and here we have a photo stop with the fan trip car number 1237. This seems to have been the very first car painted in the post-war livery, even though it was 1941, although a uh, series of cars was painted uh, with the new livery shortly thereafter, and we see other cars uh, with that same livery, having the yellow triangle on the dashboard and a simplified lettering scheme on the sides. Eventually all cars left in service were painted that way, but only the newer cars received that livery in uh, 1941. This of course is the Nepahan Avenue line in Yonkers, the site of the road operation, way up near the north end at Tompkins Avenue. There's a regular number five car in service, in its new paint scheme and here comes the fan trip car one of the rebuilt 1200 series cars there's a passing siding along Nepahan Avenue with two regular cars passing and still on the Nepahan Avenue line in downtown Yonkers we see a car passing and coming through Getty Square we're heading south now past Getty Square on Broadway in Yonkers, passing number one and number two cars in regular service. There's the city line at the car stop at 262nd Street and Broadway. Now we're back in the Bronx, heading down Broadway in the Bronx, alongside Van Cortlandt Park on the left. The C trolley we just passed was the Bronx and Van Cortlandt Park line, coming all the way from West Farm Square via 180th Street, Southern Boulevard, Fordham Road, Kingsbridge Road, 225th Street and Broadway all the way up to 262nd Street. Now the special fan trip car is posed for a photo stop at the trolley turn back at 242nd Street and Broadway just north of the IRT terminal with a White Tower hamburger stand on the right. Broadway was widened out here twice. This is its second configuration. Uh, much later it would be widened out to its present width Looking northward now from the trolley terminal at 242nd Broadway, there's a regular northbound C car heading up to 262nd Street. Now we're heading back into Yonkers and coming down toward the foot of Main Street, heading over onto Palisade Avenue and Nepahan Avenue and Yonkers Avenue near the New York Central's Putnam Division at Dunwoody and eventually winding up back at the Garden Avenue yard with that car number one seen in color this time and someone brought out an old Model T to chase the uh, the trolleys. Pelhamdale Avenue in uh, Pelham heading over to Boston Road. Now we revert to black and white for some much much later trolley scenes here in Westchester. We're back at the Getty Square Avenue area with a number six trolley uh, coming in from the Tuckahoe Road line. This is late 1940s. All these scenes uh, appear to be post-war. All of the cars have their new livery, the simplified livery first applied to some cars in 1941. There's a number seven car coming up through Getty Square from the foot of Main Street. That will head out across Yonkers Avenue and go all the way to uh, New Rochelle. This is Riverdale Avenue with a northbound car coming up the single track Riverdale Avenue line. This was number eight route. This operated from the Bronx line 
uh, all the way up Riverdale Avenue into uh, uh, Bro uh, Main Street in the Getty Square area. Back at Getty Square again, an Epperhan Avenue car, number five, coming up from the foot of Main Street, heading across Getty Square, and we'll head out Nepahan Avenue and up to Tompkins Avenue along the side of the road. A northbound car on Broadway coming up to Getty Square. This is a number one car. It will make a one block swing through Getty Square and then we'll head north on Warburton Avenue all the way up uh, to the Hastings city line. Number two car coming from Park Avenue down Palisade Avenue into Getty Square. And some work equipment near the car barn at the foot of Main Street, where many of these cars were stored. A bus on one of the bustituted lines heading down to the foot of Main Street. And an Epperhan Avenue number five car heading out from the foot of Main Street followed by a number seven car, Yonkers Avenue line, taking the switch and getting over onto the eastbound track to head out Yonkers Avenue all the way over to Mount Vernon. Number six car from the Tuckahoe Road line coming into the foot of Main Street. Various views at Main Street looking downhill toward the foot of Main Street from Getty Square. The number two trolley on Main Street is probably being put into service from the barn or taken out of service from uh, the number two line and uh, being put into the barn. Normally the number two line did not operate on this part of Main Street. This is still down near the foot of Main Street. A number two car apparently has come out of the barn and is being put into service here, making various moves back and forth. Number five car coming out of Main Street, crossing Getty Square. It will head over to Nepahan Avenue and up to Tompkins Avenue. Elm and Walnut Streets, Elm and Nepahan Avenue actually, with a number five car coming up Elm Street and will turn into Nepahan Avenue to head to the Tompkins Avenue on Nepahan. Number nine car, I believe, was a uh, the Elman Walnut Street line, which was a short line that just went up to the top of the hill and back from the foot of Main Street. A number five car on Nepahan Avenue heading southbound under the arch of the old Croton Aqueduct, and another northbound number five car passing Lake Street and and uh, moving from the middle of the road over to the side of the road and heading up the side of Nepahan Avenue all the way up to the Yonker City line at Tompkins Avenue. Various views along Nepahan Avenue as it was in the late 1940s with number five cars coming and going. That wobbling you see of the, the trolley uh, was due to uh, poor track maintenance in this area. By this time, the abandonment of the trolleys was uh, foreseen uh, in favor of buses, and track maintenance as well as car maintenance suffered badly in the last year or two, which would be around uh, 1952. The last of the Third Avenue Railway System's trolley lines were the Yonkers lines, which were abandoned in favor of buses in November of 1952. So these scenes could have been taken in the late 1940s and very early 1950s. 
This car bearing a number four banner sign uh, was probably a fan trip car and the wrong sign was put on purposely uh, just uh, for the fun of it because that's on the number five line. Here's a number five car coming down Nepahan Avenue without any banner sign. Probably in the last days of operation when such things were neglected. A northbound Nepahan Avenue car in regular service on the side of the road. And an eastbound number seven car on Yonkers Avenue crossing over the Sawmill River Parkway. Heading east on Yonkers Avenue over toward Mount Vernon. A westbound Yonkers Avenue car on Yonkers Avenue in that same vicinity of the Sawmill River Parkway. Crossing over the Sawmill River Parkway Bridge. And now riding a number seven car, or a fan trip car following a number seven car, crossing over the Sawmill River Parkway and heading east through Yonkers. A westbound number seven car passing us. Still on Yonkers Avenue in the vicinity of Dunwoody, crossing under the New York Central Railroad's Putnam Division. Uh, the underpass and the railroad bridge were put there in the late 1930s to eliminate a grade crossing of the trolley line and the uh, Putnam Division. The Putnam Division passenger service would last until 1958. Freight service a little bit longer, but not all that much. This was near Dunwoody Station, which was out of the picture to the left, and there's an eastbound number seven car coming under the Putnam Division, and a westbound car in that same area. The original section of Yonkers Avenue crossing the Putnam Division at grade may still be seen immediately to the south of the underpass. With increasing trolley and automobile traffic on Yonkers Avenue, the underpass was built there in the late 1930s to alleviate a potentially dangerous and congested situation. Back in downtown Yonkers now, here's a uh, Tuckahoe Road line car coming up Tuckahoe Road and turning back at, I believe, Shonard Place, uh, which was near uh, the Putnam Division bridge over uh, the, uh, rather the trolley bridge over the Putnam Division, which the trolleys never operated on. Some A trolleys on East 6th Street or Sanford Boulevard in Mount Vernon down near Garden Avenue Yard now. Way in the distance may be seen the Hutchinson River Parkway Bridge, and that truck is turning into the Garden Avenue Yard from East 6th, East 6th Street. This trolley has just come out of the Garden Avenue Yard and is going into service on East 6th Street, heading west up the hill. It will follow Fulton Avenue and uh, South 3rd Avenue uh, and uh, South 5th Avenue. and eventually West 1st Street over toward the Bronx. Back in New Rochelle, we have a southbound trolley coming down Huguenot Street, passing the Buick dealer there, the building with the arch roof, near the intersection of uh, Huguenot and Main. This again is post-World War II. There was a 46 or 47 Buick sedan passing by. So this is late 40s, possibly as late as 1950. There's a northbound A car heading up Main Street at this same place. A 
32 Ford and an A car passing around the New Haven Station trolley loop in New Rochelle, the mainline New Rochelle Station, with the A car heading out of the loop one block over to uh, Huguenot Street to head south back to Pelham Manor. This A car is doing the same thing coming around the loop and in the foreground may be seen the switch and connecting track for the P Webster Avenue line which had been abandoned in 1939. With this view of the underside of a trolley at the Garden Avenue yard looking up from an inspection pit we say farewell to the 3rd Avenue railway system.